Jay here for Stratford Paddock. This is the Paper Talk. As you can see, I'm in my kitchen, which means we're not live, but you can still get involved in all the comments and make sure you do hit like, share and subscribe. The weather outside, if you want to know, in sunny Salford is actually sunny, but freezing. It's literally freezing. So make sure you've got your parkers on if you're out and about in the Salford, Eccles, Weast, whatever area. Anyway, let's crack on. Uh, a lot of the stories this morning focusing on the night before. Manchester United, of course, dangling by a thread in the Champions League following that 3 all draw with Galatasaray on Joe Nana, not having the best of nights. <sighs> Listen, I don't want to dwell on that too much. We've had our post-match reaction. Me and Joe Smith did our review. Stephen Housen's given his thoughts. Andy Tate's given his thoughts. You can go and check out all the reaction up on the channel there. We know where we stand. Since those videos went out, Copenhagen and Bayern Munich had a draw. So we need Copenhagen and Galatasaray to draw and we need to beat Bayern Munich at Old Trafford. That is the only way Manchester United, I think, can progress to the next stage of the Champions League, to the Champions League knockout stages. We know what we've got to do. We've got to try and move on. It was very frustrating to be in the lead twice with a two-goal cushion and not see it over the line. The story of United season so far, I mean, it's absolutely crazy that we've scored three goals away from home three times, is it, in the Champions League? And we've not won one, one of those games. I mean, yeah, I just, like I said, I said I'm not going to dwell on it and I find myself going down that rabbit hole. So go and check out all the reaction and we'll wait and see sort of how it pans out. I will um, give you one comment, one quote from Eric Ten Hag. He said... And Andre, he's speaking about Anana. He says, Andre is okay. As I said, it's not about individuals. Of course, individual errors in football can make a difference and you take responsib some responsibility for it. But it is always about the team. So, yep, he's not blaming just Andre Onana. He's saying it's a team effort. And it is a team effort. Andre Onana made mistakes, but other players as well made certain mistakes. But it's just, it's, it's obvious what the biggest mistakes were and they were by the goalkeeper. Just on the goalkeeper front here as well, as you would expect. Following that, United are linked with, with a, a, a goalkeeper. It's almost so predictable, isn't it? Uh, this is in Football Italia and this is a report, according to a report by Il Messer Giro, as cited by Football Italia, it says here in the Manchester Evening News, United are interested in signing Lazio goalkeeper Ivan Provadel, uh, the 29-year-old who was crowned as the best goalkeeper in Serie A last season. Oh, so better than none of them. Has been on Lazio's books since August 2022, joining the club from Spezia Calcio. He has made a total of 63 appearances for the club so far, keeping 28 clean sheets. I'm not so sure about that one. I don't know. I don't see us going for another goalkeeper. We've just bought him by Andre. We've got Onana. Yes, he's had a bit of a stinker in the Champions League. I think he's been playing much better recently in the Premier League. I'd be very surprised if Manchester United were going to go out and buy another goalkeeper. Get involved in the comments and the chat and let me know what you think. Uh, just on other news as well. It says here, United or Chelsea, this is according to the Express, could take advantage of Frimpong release clause. According to a report by the Express, United or Chelsea could take advantage of Jeremy Frimpong's reportedly low-value release clause. The Bayer Leverkusen defender, whose representatives held talks with United earlier this year, has been strongly linked with an exit from the German club in recent months. According to a report by Sky Germany, Frimpong's release clause is £34.6 and it becomes active next summer. Interesting one with Frimpong. Do we need, do we, I mean, he's a right back, isn't he? Jeremy Frimpong. We've got two right backs in Aaron wan and Diogo Delo. Are they enough? Are they good enough? Do we need someone else who can come in and maybe leapfrog them to get into the first team and then you get rid of one of those two? Maybe. I think Frimpong is, is defensively, his numbers aren't great. His stats aren't great. I haven't seen a lot of him, but from what I've seen, and also going forward, but sorry, going forward, he's phenomenal. So it's it's whether it's worth the risk of what he may lack like defensively for what he brings going forward. I think going forward, he's probably better than Delo or Aaron Basaka. Defensively, he's probably not as strong as Aaron Basaka. Delo, you might debate because I think Delo is the, the best defensive right back. One of the best, if, I, if I'm being honest, I think he's one of the best defensive right backs in the league. I really do. I think going forward, he, he lacks a little bit of something. So get involved in the comments and the chat. Let us know what you think. We have been linked with Frimpong for a little while now, as that article says. And if he's got a £34 million release clause, that's not much these days. That would be a bit of a bargain for me, that. And it, it might be worth looking into for that one for Manchester United. But obviously, we'll have to sort out or work out who's going to be first choice and who's going to be 
probably getting sold. I don't think you can have three right backs at the club. You may disagree. Um, says here, Benfica duo eyed. I aid, I aid. That's not even a word. Um, again, this is in the evening news, but this is quoting Florian Plettenberg. Florian Plettenberg from Sky Germany. We've had him on the channel. Very reliable. It says United are pushing to sign Benfica duo Jao Naves and Antonio Silva in a double swoop that could cost more than 170 million, according to Sky Germany's Florian Plettenberg. United have been have long been linked with a move for 19-year-old Neves, who is already one of Benfica's most important players. Eric Tanag is also keen on Neves's defensive teammate Antonio Silva and United will push to sign at least one of them next summer. Previous reports have suggested Neves has a release clause of around 86 million quid and Plettenberg reports that Silva has a similar clause. Can you see us buying both of those? I mean, I think United in the summer will spend a lot of money. I think we're, we're going to. I think we'll end up spending somewhere like maybe around 200, 200 a million. I don't know whether we're going to go big in, in January. There's a lot of debate going on at the minute. Are United going to go big in January? But I definitely think we will in um, in the summer. So maybe that isn't that far-fetched that we went for at least one of them, possibly two. I mean, let me know what you think. Get involved in the comments. We we do need to strengthen. We know that. If we're going to challenge, if we're going to do better in Europe and we're going to challenge for a title, then we need to strengthen massively. Is Antonio Silva, I think, who's a defence uh, centre back, and um, Joe Neves, who's a midfielder. Are those two the answer? Let me know what you think. Do you think there's anything in the Frimpong rumor? Do you think there's anything in the the link for the Lazio goalkeeper? That you know the story that just seems to have popped up now uh, about Ivan uh, Provedel or Provedel. Let me know what you think because. I do expect United to do business in the summer and we're going to get linked with a lot of players. Some of them, you just think, yeah, that's a load of rubbish. But there's quite a few names there that have been linked with previously and you think that kind of makes a bit of sense. We've got to buy someone. Someone is going to be on the radar. The most interesting thing for me now is what we're going to do in January. Are we going to go big in January? Are we going to bring in another striker? We're still lacking. We're lacking up front. We saw that last night. I like uh, Andy Martial. Obviously, to go to goal at Everton, he can on his day be very, very effective. But I don't think you can rely on just Andy Martial as your backup striker. I think it's too much to just say Rasmus Hoyland has to do everything and then you've got Martial as a backup. Martial gets injured a lot of the time as well. Then what are you going to do? Just have Hoyland. I think we need another striker. You may disagree. You may think we need other players. Get involved in the comments and the chat. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, we'll be back later on. We've got Off The Bar coming up later on today. Then me and Joe are going to be doing Paddock Live this evening. So make sure you are hitting like, share and subscribe. Don't forget as well, if you're in Dublin on the 28th of December, we're going to be here, there, everywhere. Um, we're going to be there. It's going to be me, Joe. Stephen Alson, uh, Adam McCullough, and Wes Brown. So check out the link in the description. I've been Jay Moy. This has been a paper talk from a very cold Salford. Thanks for watching.